So you think of that as like a turn off? Yeah, it makes me want to run away. So yeah, I would say I would call it a turn off. Open up. You open up. Hi guys, I'm Hannah. I'm Sadie. And we're not straight. And today we're gonna launch into part two of the skin deep the and game that we've been playing mm -hmm. um, so we have more questions and we're ready to go um, before we start just a reminder we have a cool instagram um, that's hannah and sadie 10 um, and if you like this kind of content consider subscribing yeah okay ready yeah okay okay i'm the oldest so i'm gonna start <laughs> <laughs> that's not a rule of this game <laughs> Ooh, okay, a heavy hitter. Why are you in this relationship? Whoa. I think I'm in this relationship because at first I wanted to try it and I was curious about it and I knew that you were awesome. And so like worst case scenario, it would be fun for a while and then maybe it wouldn't work out. Um, I guess I'm still in this relationship because it's, it makes my life better. It makes me better. Uh, it makes my day to day like more fun, more fulfilling. Um, it, it makes me grow. It's, I don't know. It helps me experience new things. Like every, it's so many reasons. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Okay. In the back of your mind, are you scared that I will walk away? I don't think I'm scared that you'll walk away in the back of my mind. Like, I don't think that's something that's ever present. Mm -hmm. So, no. I have had thoughts. Like, it's been like a passing thought in my mind on occasion. But I feel like we've talked about it. I mean, we've come to the understanding that we are going to keep communicating and be honest with each other. So I think if you were to walk away, it would be a conversation, like a, like a, we would have communicated that already. Mm -hmm. And if something drastic changes for one or both of us in the future, and that ends up being the best option for both of us, then I think we'll know, but at this point in time, no, I don't, I don't think I'm scared of that. Um, yeah, I don't think so. Good. <coughs> <coughs> okay. <coughs> Is this okay? <laughs> How do I love? How do you love? I think you show your love by trying to make me laugh um, and making things playful and fun. Um, so you love in that way. Uh, you love in a pretty big and honest way, I think. And you love by being like vulnerable and by caring to ask the questions that are hard. Like you love by like confrontation and like in a, in the best way. You love with laughter and kindness and like fierce attention and intention. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <clears throat> what have we yet to try to do together? Ooh, interesting. Um, it's kind of fun, right? Yeah. Not much. <laughs> I feel like we've done a lot. We've moved in together. We have traveled together. Um, we started a YouTube channel together. <laughs> I know, I know. I don't even have a cheater thought on this. It's like a really easy one. Um, 
so for skydiving, which you're never going to want. I'm, yeah, I'm not going skydiving for sure. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm not going skydiving. <laughs> don't do that. Uh, oh, we, we don't have a pet. <laughs> That's true. I feel like yet is like a, something that we are planning on happening in the future. Yeah. I think that's a pretty solid one that will likely happen in the future. Yeah. We don't have a pet. Or a kid. We don't have a titan. Yeah, or a puppy. Or a puppy. (laughs) Or even a goldfish. (laughs) We don't want a goldfish. They are the most loving animals. (laughs) (laughs) They're so snuggly. I know. (laughs) I don't know. I don't know what we haven't done together. Do you have an answer for this? I don't know. I thought it would be fun to see what ideas you come up with. We haven't done a big road trip together. Oh, yeah. Okay, I would love to do that. We haven't been to South America together. I would love to do that, too. We haven't been in a hot air balloon together (laughs) yet. (laughs) Though you have by yourself. (laughs) Yeah, those are good answers. Thank you. Okay. Ooh. This one has, like, a little middle finger on the, like, that's the little, um... Oh, the symbol on the top. Symbol, and it's funny. I I don't really get why. Well, I kind of get why, but... What's your favorite imperfection about me? Huh. I think I like the way you can't go without attention, without my attention. (laughs) I think that has to be my all-time favorite. (laughs) That's such a good one. <laughs> like, I I do like to study, and I do get really honed in, and I like to focus. And you don't seem great at handling that when I am focused. <laughs> but, it's, true. but it's always like you run over to me, and the response, instead of, like, being angry and running away, it's like, I'm going to come hug you so that you're forced to look at me. <laughs> Or, like, I'm going to tell you this really funny thing so that we can laugh together and then you're paying attention to me again. Like, it's just so charming. Thank you. Yeah. I mean that. I'm glad you like it. I'm always afraid that you're going to get really annoyed with me and you're going to be like, you need to leave for a while. No, I would literally never say that to you. (laughs) I guess there are different scenarios where it's more welcome than others. (laughs) But that doesn't mean it's not my favorite. <laughs> that doesn't mean it's not, like, overall. I'll try to pick those ones out. <laughs> okay. Good, good, good. Okay. <clears throat> what would scare you the most about becoming a mother? Oh, my God. So many things. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't it seem scary to you? I mean, yeah. I don't think it would be... It's, I don't think it's insurmountable. I mean, we, we're here. <laughs> Ours survived. (laughs) It's true. uh, The thing that would scare me the most would be, I think, having the outside pressures of society and expectations of, you know, um, gender roles or family or religion or, like, language speaking or whatever, just any sort of expectation put on a child that I wouldn't be able to mitigate that... Hmm would affect them and, and maybe in hurtful ways and cause, I don't know, cause them to feel self-conscious or be bullied or not want to do certain things or feel like they're not worthy or don't have the same amount of dignity as others and not being able to just like get rid of those things altogether so that they wouldn't have to deal with it. I think that would, that terrifies me. That's so interesting. Like, the sending them out into the world part. And not being able to... Not being able to, like, create a soft landing. Or, like, not knowing if the way that I or we have prepared them to interact is going to be sufficient for them to be able to, like, know (laughs) that they like, are worthy of love, and they're worthy of, like, all of the things that everybody, all of the, you know, basic rights that everyone should have, 
and hmm. not knowing how the world might treat them. I think that scares me. Huh. Did you interpret that differently? Yeah, I was thinking of it as like what scares you the most about your, yourself as a mother. Not necessarily about like having a kid. Oh. But I don't know. Having to touch dirty things. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> like it, changing diapers or like just No, like everything. Post, I think maybe like post diapers before like third grade. I feel like kids are sticky and they're unaware. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Just hose them down. I think we could just hose them down. It's a little cold in winter though. <laughs> I don't know that's like that part of it like food especially I'm like I don't like like taking sips of water and like the, you see all the floaties go back in and I'll do that part thanks <laughs> <laughs> okay is that more along the lines of what you thought yeah, I might say I mean <laughs> I feel like we went from like really meta and deep to floaties in really, a water cup. Really, discreet, like, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what scares me. It's funny. <laughs> and losing all of my autonomy. Yeah. I mean, but. Obviously. What are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I love this one. How have your feelings for me changed? Oh boy. I want to say this in a way that doesn't sound offensive, but I want to be honest. I think that they haven't on principle, but they've deepened. Okay. So I think all of the feelings that I always had have just grown exponentially like I always respected you I always thought you were hilarious and a lot of fun and I always looked up to you oh gosh as just like a beacon of knowledge and all of those things are still true and I still feel that way and it's all just magnified and intensified like I respect you loads more I know you so much better and therefore I don't know it's just more it's just more all of that like I loved you before what else that's perfect <laughs> who has more power in the relationship interesting <laughs> I think there are different kinds of power but I would say you um, <laughs> you would say me. Yeah, or I thought that it would be you. I don't know. I hadn't thought about it as much. I think I would say you because I think that you are, <laughs> I think that you're smarter than me and I think that you're more genuine than me. And I think that that gets you a long way. Um, I think that you can navigate a lot of situations and you can do so with honesty and grace and confidence and in a way that I would be maybe scared to. So I think that you have like the potential for infinite power, <laughs> maybe infinitely more than I feel like I have the potential for and not infinite power. Um, Are you thinking like externally? I mean, yeah, generally, but because that's my perspective, I think that mm. I, I feel like that kind of translates into our relationship too. I feel like the sources of power for me in our relationship are that you tend to defer to me for communication and honesty between us. And I feel like I look to you for a lot of other things in our relationship. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I think so. It's 
it's funny to think about it as who takes control because I feel like that is more often you mm -hmm. but I recognize that those are two different things <clears throat> ooh what do you think I'm learning from you oh I think that you're learning how to be more of an empath maybe as far as your other relationships and friendships yeah, go. I for think sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's something that I usually bring up is mm -hmm. what I what I think other people might be feeling. Mm -hmm. You're learning a little about computer programming. <laughs> Okay, ready? Yeah. I don't remember what this is. I'm ready for it. Lay it on me! <laughs> <laughs> what is a total turnoff for you in our habits? Ooh. I think a total turnoff for me in our habits. <laughs> I have a really hard time thinking you know specifics for these, so I'm gonna go again with the big picture. Okay. And say routine. <laughs> Is a total turn off for me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Which we talk about all the time. Yeah. I have a really hard time with doing the same thing over and over. For example, eating lunch at noon every day, that in and of itself wouldn't bother me, but eating the same thing for lunch at noon every day would totally bother me, or having to sit down and like eat in the same chair or have my same like s same like drink every day or something like that, like with my lunch, that would drive me crazy because it would feel like a trap. <laughs> like I can't get out of it. And what if one day I just want something different and I am wholly unprepared for that. <laughs> like, you might want something, a different drink for lunch. Yeah. And wouldn't be able to have it? Like, if I planned to have the same thing every day or do the same thing, if one day I just didn't want to do it. But there was no I other think, option. Yeah, that would Got frustrate it. me. It doesn't give me any sense of security or peace uh, in the way that I think it does for a lot of people. Sometimes I try to create routines, and they always fail. Every single time. <laughs> Every single time. I did, I used the same app for workouts for like nine months, and then I just totally quit cold turkey because I was like, nah, I just don't want to do it anymore. And it was like something I'd been doing for so long, and it was just super easy for me to just leave it. And I think a lot of people would feel a gaping hole in their day, and I was like, no, it's fine. <laughs> So you think of that as like a turn off? Yeah, it makes me want to run away. So yeah, I would say, I would call it a turn off. Hmm. Yeah. I'm trying to think of something like really, really specific. Like when I put my dirty napkin back on the table willy nilly and you fold it back up and put it in line. <laughs> that doesn't bother me. Or when I always turn on the big light in our bedroom instead of the lamp and then it's too bright in there and you turn off the big light every time. I wouldn't call those things like turnoffs. It's just, I, I don't really care about those things. It's just a, I don't know. It's like a fun little like pseudo argument that we get to have like a little squabble. It's important. This is all we have <laughs> to find <Now>. out. <laughs> oh, you mean during COVID? Yeah. <laughs> well, that was it. That's all she wrote. That's all of them. Because we're still kind of holed up inside. Trapped. We're not trapped. <laughs> we're not like physically, <laughs> literally trapped. <laughs> um, we will have another musical interlude on Friday, so be sure to tune in then. Yeah. Um, so I guess, see you Friday. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <clears throat> Oh, my legs. Ow. Deer. <laughs> Honey. No, deer. Captain, you're, you're our team captain. Team captain? I thought I was the boat captain. For a team. You're... Oh, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. You're also <laughs> the ship 
Captain. Thank you. I'm your first mate. <laughs> You're my only mate. I'm also not your first mate. <laughs>